Ursula K. Le Guin's Hainish cycle takes place in a science fiction universe that contains a number of planets, some of which have been explored and made part of an interplanetary group called the League of All Worlds and its successor, the Ekumen. Others are explored and re explored by the League and the Ekumen over a time frame spanning centuries. Le Guin has used approximately a dozen planets as primary settings for her novels, as such, they have detailed physical and cultural descriptions. Legin reveals in The Left Hand of Darkness that at that narrative time, there were 83 planets in the Ekumen, with Gethin a candidate for the 84th. Topic: <laughs> AKA AKA is a monoethnic world that recently underwent an aggressive revolutionary change in technological status, during which almost all of the traditional culture was suppressed or rejected. AKA is governed by a despotic state which mandates a form of scientific theism and aims to turn its citizens into ideal, producer consumers, with the ultimate goal of attaining advanced spaceflight capabilities. AKA is the setting of most of the telling. ATHSHE ATHSHE is a forest planet whose name means «forest», also known as «World 41» and called «New Tahiti» by Terrans. ATHSHE is peopled by a small, furred but in fact fully human group of HILFs high-intelligence life forms. ATHSHE was exploited for its timber resources, with the forests completely wiped out on many of its islands before a native revolt expelled the Terrans, as described in the word for world is forest. Athsha's plants and animals are similar to those of Earth, placed there by the Hainish people in their first wave of colonization, which also settled Earth. A Cetian visitor categorically states that the native humans came from the same, original, Hainish stock. It is not explained why the people of ATHSHE are green-furred and only one meter tall. Their sleeping cycles are also very different from the Hainish norm. There are two likely explanations. One possibility is that the original settlers were genetically modified by the Hainish. On the other hand, enough time has passed since the original settlement for the locals to have naturally evolved in response to their environment. Topic Eleven Sorrow. Eleven Sorrow is a world that had a high technology and then a massive crash. A strange introverted new culture has emerged, with women living alone and unwilling to talk to visitors. The post-collapse culture is described in the short story Solitude, which appeared in the Birthday of the World. The people of Eleven Sorrow are of Hainish descent and briefly had the maximum population density of any known planet, with the greatest cities ever built on any world, covering two of the continents entirely, with small areas set aside for farming. There had been 120 billion people living in the cities, while the animals and the sea and the air and the dirt died, until the people began dying too. Faraday. Faraday has a prominent place in Rokanon's world. Faraday is a young planet whose inhabitants embark on a career of interstellar war and conquest, and construct a secret base on the backward world where the book takes place, from which destructive ships could be launched to numerous targets while the League of All Worlds spends its force on subduing their home world. Seeing as the planet is named for a famous Earth physicist, it was evidently discovered and named by Terrans, who introduced its inhabitants to interstellar civilization the Faradayans are specifically mentioned as having learned to play chess from Terrans. Faraday seems loosely modeled on Imperial Japan, i.e., a relative late coma to an existing civilization, which quickly takes up new technologies, builds up aggressive armed forces in order to carve out a bigger place for itself in that established civilization, oppresses weaker cultures and peoples which it encounters, and makes use of fanatic pilots ready to embark on suicide missions. 
The act of Rokanan at the end of the book results in the destruction of their secret base. Faraday's aggressive designs are evidently checked or destroyed, as it is mentioned in Rokanan's world that the League is attacking the planet itself, and the planet is not heard of again in later books. Topic: <laughs> Ganem Tadkla. Ganem is a very diverse world with some high technology. The inhabitants, or one group of them, are called the Gaiman. Ancient Hainish records refer to Ganem as G14214 Yomo and also Tadkla. The tale of the first two Ekerman visits is told in the short story, Dancing to Ganem, which appeared in A Fisherman of the Inland Sea. It is described as one of the outermost seedings of the Hainish expansion, and lost from the human community for 500 millennia. Gethin Gethin is a very cold, glacier-covered planet also known as «winter». It is inhabited by androgynous intelligent humanoids, surmised in the left hand of darkness to be descended from genetically engineered Hainish settlers. Other than the left hand of darkness, Gethin also appears in the short stories, «Winter's King» and «Coming of Age in Carhide». Hain Hain is the prime world in the Hainish cycle and is also known as Davenant and Hain Davenant and is about 140 light years from Terra, Earth. It is the oldest culture in both the League of Worlds and later the Ekumen. Ecumen cultural observers, like Genli AI in the Left Hand of Darkness, are trained on Hain. Three of the short stories in A Fisherman of the Inland Sea include details of life on Hain. More is seen in the first half of A Man of the People in Four Ways to Forgiveness. The history of the people of Hain goes back three million years. Hain is supposedly the original source of most intelligent life in the planets of the Ekumen, and some of the plant and animal life. It once had a culture centered around high technology which seeded humans or genetically modified humans on various nearby planets, including Earth and the other worlds now in the League and Ekumen. The older, colonizing, high-tech culture crashed, and from it a more wisely rebuilt culture arose that is current during the narrative present in the novels. In the novels present, the Hanish can neither conceive children nor sire them without consciously deciding to do so. Conscious choice conception is not described elsewhere among the ecumen humanoids, and during the earlier seeding colonial period, the Hanish genetic modifications included apparently experimental changes to human sexuality. Evidence of the former high-tech life is all around Hain, along with demonstrations of the current Hainish indifference to it. STSE is an almost island, separated from the mainland of the Great South Continent by marshes and tidal bogs, where millions of wading birds gather to mate and nest. Ruins of an enormous bridge are visible on the landward side, and another half-sunk fragment of ruin is the basis of the town's boat pier and breakwater. Vast works of other ages encumber all Hain, and are no more and no less venerable or interesting to the Hainish than the rest of the landscape. The character Havshiva is a man who grows up on Hain, though he ends up working for the Hainish embassy on Yo. We see the ruins of past technology and learn of the highly localized social order that exists on some parts of the planet. Through his story we see the dual social systems working on Hain. Both the Pueblo centered agrarian village life directed by local gods, moieties, lineage and inherited expectations on the one hand and also the interstellar Ekumen culture of the historians centered on the city of Cathad, which the Pueblo peoples describe as crazy. Geography <laughs> 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 Hain is described as possessing two continents, referenced simply as the Great and the South Continent. We learn that Hain had been for several thousand years in an unexciting period marked by the coexistence of small, stable self-contained societies currently called Pueblos, with a high-technology, low-density network of cities and information centers called the Temple. A number of settlements are described. 
Estse is a Pueblo village on an isle on the northwestern coast of the South Continent and the home of Havshiva. Etsahan is a larger town, and trading center on the mainland opposite. Kafhad is home to the temple, and a center of the historians the interstellar Ekumen culture of Hain. Darinda is a city of the southern continent, where Havshiva had visited his uncle and from where Tiu his college girl friend had grown up. Although a city with some manufacturing it appears to have not been sprawling. The topography is implied to be hilly and the terraces of Darinda are mentioned throughout both Four Ways to Forgiveness and Another Story. Other cities mentioned include Arkanon, Asbaran and Dahar. New South Georgia New South Georgia is the location of the League of Worlds HILF survey base for Galactic Area 8, in Rokanon's world. Its chief city is Kerguelen. Outside of the fictional realm of the Hainish Cycle, the Kerguelen Islands are in the Southern Indian Ocean, the New Georgia Islands are in the South Pacific Ocean and the Antarctic Territory South Georgia serves as the base of the British Antarctic Survey. With this in mind, we may imagine that New South Georgia, like Gethin, is a wintry Ice Age world. Since its name is taken from Terran landscape, the world was presumably discovered by Terrans. O O is a planet four light years from Hain, described in the title story of the collection A Fisherman of the Inland Sea. Its people are known as Kyo and it is notable for its unusual four-person marriage system a set combination of genders, sexual orientations, and both of O's moieties. Two more tales about this world and its customs are found in the collection The Birthday of the World. O shares its name with the island of O in Le Guin's Earth Sea stories. Rokanan Rokanan is the second planet of the star Fommelhout, peopled by at least three high intelligence life forms. It is the setting of the novel Rokanan's World. The planet is described as Fommelhout II during its exploration. Some references list it as Rokanan's World, but Legin's books refer to it as Rokanan, which is Rokanan's name among the native Gadamia. Segri Segri is a planet noted for its extreme gender segregation, and for having 16 adult women for every adult man. Its history is told in a novelette, The Matter of Segri, which appears in The Birthday of the World. The people are of Hainish descent. A Hainish visitor believes that the imbalance of the sexes is another ancient genetic experiment of her remote ancestors. My ancestors must have really had fun playing with these people's chromosomes. I feel guilty, even if it was a million years ago, the tiny minority of men on Segri live imprisoned in complexes known as castles, away from the rest of society from the age of puberty. Women have control and responsibility for all productive endeavors, including industry, governance, agriculture, business, and trade. Segri is a matriarchal society. A society where men have extreme privilege but no power. Men in the castles engage in constant sporting competitions, some of which are quite violent. The castles are supported by stud fees paid by their female customers. Women identify the lovers they wish to hire during the numerous public sporting events. If a woman conceives, an additional fee is paid to the castle. Women marry only other women, and men do not marry. Men on Segri wear their hair ornamentally long and dress ostentatiously tailoring is one of the few male crafts on Segri. In contrast, women crop their hair short and dress in a fashion considered drab by offworlders. The castles themselves are governed by brutal despots who rule by force. The civil authorities in greater female society do not concern themselves with the castle's internal affairs. The situation is rationalized in various ways by the matriarchy. 
Men are considered to be capable only of childish competition and acts of great courage, but not of endeavors requiring intellect and patience although the women acknowledge that men can be very clever in strategizing in sports. Thus the castle system gives them the freedom to do what they truly love without burdening them with the drudgery of everyday work. The civil authorities assume that the men can rule themselves, and that the castle despots will not needlessly kill the men under their rule, because of the valuable stud fees the men command a clear allegory to the argument that slaves were too valuable to mistreat during the slavery era in the USA. Despite the narrow view of men by women on Segri, men are greatly admired for their beauty and physical prowess. Some women spend vast amount of money hiring men as studs apparently men are only available in this way for a fee. They are idolized by many young women on Segri in about the same manner as rock stars in real society. Like rock stars, the high stud fees commanded by champion athletes makes them unattainable for the vast majority of women. Terra. Terra is the Earth, the third planet of our solar system. Terrans are descendants of colonists from Hain. At some unspecified date, Terrans join the League of All Worlds, which includes the Cetians and other peoples of Hainish descent. In the Left Hand of Darkness, it is said that Hainish normal people were placed among Terra's own proto-hominid autochthones by the ancient Hainish colonizers. After that initial contact with Hainish civilization Terra experiences two more cycles of isolation followed by the restoration of extraterrestrial contact and community with other worlds. The second period of contact with the interstellar Hainish community is the background for the word for world is forest, in which people from Terra appear as aggressive settlers of other planets, the dispossessed, and Rokanon's world. In The Dispossessed, Terra's population is described as having collapsed from around 9 billion to only half a billion people. Some time later, City of Illusions provides a detailed description of Terra in the depths of a third era of isolation. A post-apocalyptic Earth is seen in City of Illusions as the story takes place across a large landmass, perhaps North America, which shows signs of an advanced, abandoned civilization under a rewilded landscape. A small number of humans live in tiny, isolated settlements where they retain some technologies from the past but are completely cut off from any communication with neighboring regions or with other worlds. There is only one city with high technology and energy intensive construction. The events of City of Illusions lead up to the third period of Terran contact with other worlds, during which the Left Hand of Darkness takes place. In the short story Dancing to Ganem, which takes place in the far future of the Hainish universe, it is said that an extreme religious movement called the Unists developed on Terra and engaged in mass slaughter of non-believers, and then of rival Unist sects. It is described as, "...the worst resurgence of theocratic violence since the time of pollution." The inclusion of this story is meant to show that even after so many millennia in the League and the Ekerman, Terra is still in many ways culturally primitive and prone to violent self-destruction. It unclear if the "...time of pollution." refers to the collapse referred to in the Dispossette, the collapse seen in City of Illusions, or is another, unexplored dark period on Terra. Likewise the novel Always Coming Home is set on Earth, during a period of high sea levels and technological collapse, with the only retained remnant of past high technology being remote access links to an encyclopedic database via Ansible. This could situate it within the League or Ecumen, during one of the Terran cycles of isolation, however a central theme of the novel is the protagonist's cultural indifference to places outside of their home valley, so information giving off world context for the novel are excluded from the book. Various individuals from Terra play a part in other stories. For example, in the telling, Terra's incorporation into the Ekerman is briefly explained. Also, one of the two main characters in The Left Hand of Darkness, the Hainish trained cultural observer Genli AI, is from Terra. Uras and Anaris 
Aras and Anaris form a double planet system the people of each regard the other as their moon in orbit around the star Tau Ceti. The Cetians who inhabit both worlds are a very hairy humanoid race which is scientifically advanced. Aras is divided into many countries with a variety of political systems. Anaris is peopled by the Odonians, an anarchist group in voluntary exile from Aras. The action of the dispossessed takes place on Aras and Anaris. Aras is also the setting of the short story, The Day Before the Revolution, which appears in the short story collection The Wind's Twelve Quarters. Aras The larger body of a double planet system, Aras is covered by oceans and continents. The oceans are simply named Tuv Sea, Insul Sea, North Sea, and Great South Sea. Besides a couple of smaller islands, Aras landmass is split in two big continents. Aras is the original world of the Cetians. An anarchist group called Odonians, separating from its Propertarian society, have settled in Ares, but still have an influence on the various nations of Aras, as is told in The Dispossessed. The nation-states of Aio and Tu, both portrayed as developed industrial societies, are on one of the two continents. Aio is evidently a capitalist and somewhat oligarchic parliamentary republic, whereas Tu is described as a totalitarian socialist state allegories of the United States of America and the Soviet Union. On the second large continent, unstable Benbili is found, whose society is economically underdeveloped. In the dispossessed, Aio and Tu fight a proxy war in Benbili, both claiming to be restoring stability, an allegory of the Vietnam War. In Day Before the Revolution both Benbili and Mand, a neighboring kingdom state, are described as being warlike and archaic. A Ioth nation of Aio is the only nation on Uras described in extensive detail. It is on a large peninsula in the eastern hemisphere of the planet, between the North Sea and the Tuv Sea. It shares the entirety of its land border with the rival nation of Tu. Together, these two nations occupy nearly half of the eastern continent. Aio is described in the dispossessed as being extremely verdant, amply forested and agriculturally fertile in contrast with Anaris with a small mountain range in the north and several hilly regions. It is described by the Terran ambassador Keng as being the closest imaginable approximation to paradise. The native fauna of Aio include otters which are commonly kept as pets, horses and sheep. The history of Aio is not extensively described. It is indicated that the nation was once a monarchy, but by the lifetime of Odo, approximately 200 years before the events of the dispossessed IOTI culture is presented as being grossly hedonistic, obsessed with the conspicuous display of wealth and preserving distinct and dramatic class imbalances between the property owners and the common people called Neoti. On Shevik's home planet of Anaris, children are typically informed about the excesses of IOTI culture to provide a distinction and justification for the austerity of Anaresti culture. Although Shevik and his classmates question the accuracy of such instructionals as it is unclear whether the images of poverty and excess are modern or date back to before the settlement of Anaris, his own curiosity about the reality of life in cities like Niosaia exposes him to similar excesses and glimpses of economic inequality. In Day Before the Revolution it is mentioned that the heartland of Aio was part of an empire centered on a town called Air, 4,400 years before Odo, and on several occasions in both books it is mentioned that Aio culture is over 7,000 years old. The Aio calendar counts 10 millennia. Although Shevik has a curiosity about the heritage of Aio, there is only passing mention. Cities on the continent Aras Three cities of Aras are described in detail. Niosaia is described as being a city of 5 million people, and is the capital of Aio. It is described as having many impressive skyscrapers, lavish structures, squares, and frenetic shopping avenues that run for miles. It has a metropolitan train and subway system, and its central station is described as having a dome of ivory and azure that is the largest dome ever raised on any world by the hand of man
Later in The Dispossessed, Shevik discovers the poorer and more decrepit regions of the city, in which there is a clandestine insurrection movement. It is built on an estuary marsh straddling the Sua River, and has many districts and neighborhoods. Yu Yun is the location of the university within which Shevik is provided with a teaching position and an apartment to work on his general temporal theory. There are many research laboratories in the city, including a light research laboratory. It is in on the edge of a valley, which is described as being thoroughly agrarian. Rodard is the former capital of the Avon province, and is the current seat of the Council of World Governments on Uras. It is therefore home to many foreign embassies, including that of Terra. The city itself is heavily wooded with pine trees, so much so that their presence has a misty, narrowing effect on the streets. Like Niosaya, Rodard is described as having many ornate and elaborate towers the text is ambiguous as to whether these are skyscrapers, as it is noted that they ring bells indicating the hour of the day. It is on a river, and the city has seven bridges leading into it. The remnants of older castles and towers lie in the shadow of newer roadways and buildings as is the case with the Terran embassy, housed in an old castle. Anaris Anaris is the smaller body of the double planet, recently colonized from Uras. It is largely covered by land with two large, isolated seas whose fish species have evolved differently as the biggest bodies of water, its society is egalitarian, there still exists a center, namely Abanay, the capital city, where a spaceport and several central facilities are located. Ever since Anares was settled by Odonian separatists, contact to Uras has been strictly limited by a treaty, the only point of contact being Uristi freighters landing and exchanging cargo at the spaceport in Abanay. Odonianism was developed by anarchist philosopher Leia Odo, who lived in the Propertarian nation state of Arayo on the planet of Uras. Odonians speak the Pravic language, which fits their outlook and social structure and is described in considerable detail. Sessions appear or are mentioned in various other tales, mostly without specifying which world they come from. But in The Showbiz Story, the Sessian Jivata is from Anaris. Churton theory was developed on his home world, which evidently retains Odonian approval of cooperation and rejection of proprietarian habits. Werrell, Alterra In the Hainish cycle science fiction stories of Ursula K. Le Guin, Werrell is the colloquial name for Alterra, a fictional planet of the star Gamma Draconis. It is one of two planets called Werrell in that series. The name is an informal though standard one and means just, the world. History It is the setting for Planet of Exile, and its later history is given in City of Illusions. The third planet of the star Gamma Draconis, it has an elliptical orbit lasting 60 Earth years. Also a moon with an orbit 400 days long, leading to some wild weather. It was settled after the invention of the Ansible and was planned as a defense against the enigmatic enemy. But there was no contact after the first ship, consisting entirely of people from Earth. These colonists settled in a town called Landin, and tried to co-exist with the native high intelligence life forms HILF. As all terror, Werrell is also mentioned in The Left Hand of Darkness and Four Ways to Forgiveness. Legin has made clear that it should not be confused with the Werrell of Four Ways to Forgiveness, which is a planet with very different characteristics. At first, the Earth human population dwindled. Then they formed a close alliance with one of the native tribes and also found that they could interbreed, which had previously been thought impossible. On this basis, they recover and unify the world. After 1,200 years, the Alterans send a ship to Earth in City of Illusions, using a near-light speed system. They are attacked and all but two perish. One of these outwits the alien Shing, oppressors of Earth, and returns to fetch help. 
Presumably he succeeds, Genli AI in the left hand of darkness comes from Earth and remembers the age of the enemy as something terrible, but also now over. Science The long orbit is scientifically correct, since Gamma Draconis is a giant star and a habitable world would have to be much further away from its sun. The name Eltanen given in City of Illusions is one of the star's traditional names. Its distance from Earth is given as 142 light-years, which is close to the current estimate. On the other hand, giant stars last 100 million years or so, which is much less time than Earth needed to evolve complex life. It is probable that the native humanoids are of Hainish origin, as are many other indigenous populations in the Hainish cycle, descendants of genetically modified Hanish colonists from the ancient Hanish colonial epoch, similar to other planets in the cycle. This would account for the successful inbreeding, which should not be possible if they had evolved from completely different biospheres. In 1.5 million years, Eltanen will pass within 28 light years of Earth. At this point it will be as bright as Sirius. This would be long after the setting of Le Guin's tales. Werrell is a fictional planet in the Eckermann science fiction novels of Ursula K. Le Guin. It is the fourth planet of a yellow-white star. Its dominant nation, Vo Dio, colonized Yo, the previously uninhabited third planet, after contact with the Eckermann. It is one of two planets named Werrell in the Hainish cycle. <laughs> Werrell and Vo Dio Werrell was colonized by the ancient Hainish people, long ago, in the final phase of the expansion. There seem to have been no native animals, all existing animals are of Hainish origin, as are some of the plants. Like most planets of the ancient Hainish expansion, it lost touch and forgot its origins. When the Ekerman contacted Werrell, it was divided into many nations, which for millennia had had social systems where the dominant black skinned ethnic group, the Owners enslaved the lighter-skinned ethnic group, the assets or dusties. The dominant nation on Werrell at that time was Vo Dio, to the extent that in Four Ways to Forgiveness, it is noted that to speak of Werrell is to speak of Vo Dio as exemplary. Vo Dio began as one of many states and was located to the south of the equator. Through conquest Vo Dio went on and occupied most of the only continent on the planet, particularly the north. At the time of contact with the Ekerman, a number of client states are located in the south and on various islands. This Werrell should not be confused with the Werrell of Planet of Exile and City of Illusions, which is the third planet of the orange giant star Gamma Draconis. In the introduction to the collection The Birthday of the World, Legin admits an error in reusing the name and indicates she had forgotten its prior use. Yo Contact with the more technologically advanced Ekerman caused varying degrees of panic among Werrell's nations, and led to Vo Dio developing a space program and colonizing Yo, at that time uninhabited. The vast majority of the settlers were assets owned by Vo Deans, and in the initial years, the asset population was almost entirely male. This led to a social system among the assets where hypermasculinity was prized and formalized homosexual relationship patterns developed. When female assets arrived in larger numbers, they found themselves at the bottom of the existing social hierarchy. The Vo Deans exploited the natural resources of Yo for a few hundred years and caused a great deal of damage to its environment. Most of the native life forms were destroyed and replaced with transplants from Werrell. Concepts of freedom leaking in from the Ekerman led to a widespread revolt by Yo's assets, which ultimately defeated the Vodine military force there. The other nations of Werrell saw the revolt as a Vodine problem and refused to assist in suppressing it. Vodio had access to a weapon of mass destruction, the biobomb, 
but decided not to use it against the rebellion. Yo's independence struggle occurred within the lifetimes of some of the characters in Four Ways to Forgiveness. The example of Yo inspired the assets of Vo Dio to start their own revolt on Werrell. The resulting civil war is part of the background of the short story, Old Music and the Slave Women. The geography of Yo is dominated by two continents. Most of the life forms on the planet are introduced species from Werrell, which in turn means of Hanish origin. Native life forms are almost exclusively plant, with only a select few microscopic species being classified as non plant. Rakuli and other worlds The star has 16 planets, including Werrell and Yo. Life also developed on the fifth planet, Rakuli. But it is arid and cold, fit only for its native invertebrates and not yet used by the Weralians. Other worlds Beldine, Centaurus, Chifawar, Cime, Ensbo, Four Taurus, Gao, Gde, Huthu, Capetan, Keek, Orant, Olul, Prestno, S, Shishal Haven, Ve and Uttermosts are planets mentioned, but not described in any detail in one or more tales of the Hainish cycle. They have not, so far, been the setting for a story. The left hand of darkness has generally showing pictures of various worlds, some described in later stories but including Chifawar, Cime, Ensbo, Four Taurus, Gao, Gde, Captain, Olul, S, Shishal Haven and the Uttermosts. Little is said about most of them. We are told that Gde wrecked its natural balance tens of thousands of years ago and is mostly sand and rock deserts, that Olul is the closest world to Gethin, 17 light years away, and that Chifawar is a «peaceful» planet. We hear no more about most of these planets, though in the short story, «The Matter of Segri», it is mentioned that Four Taurus is also known as Eau. Argavan 17 visits Olul in the short story, «Winter's King». A trip of 24 light years each way, this contradicts the description in the left hand of darkness that Olul is 17 light years away from Gethin. As for S, it is possible that S is another name for Athshe. Some additional worlds are mentioned in later short stories. In Dancing to Ganem, a world called Orant is mentioned in passing. It is the only world from which the Ekumen has yet withdrawn foreseeing a disaster in which, "...the Orontians destroyed sentient life on their world by the use of pathogens in war." A few thousand children were saved, being taken off the world with the consent of their parent. The "...solitude", which appears in the birthday of the world mentions, "...the tree cities of Huthu", which is near eleven sorrow. In "...forgiveness day." which appears in Four Ways to Forgiveness, a planet called Keek is mentioned as having destroyed itself some time ago, as Orant had earlier. In A Man of the People, which appears in Four Ways to Forgiveness and also in The Showbiz Story, Ve is described as the next planet out from Hain. It has mostly been a satellite or partner of Hainish civilizations and is at that time inhabited entirely by historians and aliens. This is told from the viewpoint of a Hainish man, so non-Hainish peoples must be meant. In the word for world is forest, Prestno is mentioned as a world close to Athshe. It is also called World 88. In Vaster than Empires and More Slow, which appears in the Wind's Twelve Quarters, one crew member comes from Beldine, the Garden Planet, which never discovered chastity, or the wheel." In Rokanon's world, Centaurus is mentioned, in that it was Centaurans who had traveled to Rokanon and given dwarf-like Gadamia higher technologies. In the Shobi story, M6340 Nololo is a brown desolate world inhabited only by bacteria, as well as the destination of their experimental flight and only 17 light years from Hain. <laughs> 